clarify, so the in links, links is now in uh, its phase two. Uh, uh, it's an NIH common fund project, and Mount Sinai actually has the two centers. There is a data generation center at Mount Sinai. The viral is the data coordination center for links, and there are two other PIs. One is from the University of Miami, and the other one from the University of Cincinnati. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to integrate the data that is coming from those links data generation centers and develop tools uh, that integrate it also with the public domain. Uh, so just a, I'm wondering in the, the people on the table, uh, does anyone uh, does who knows uh, what is gene set enrichment analysis is? Like if you can raise your hand. So I think uh, we have the honor to have Arvind here, who was the first author of this uh, seminal paper that is now cited over 7,000 uh, times, where for the first time people sort of like started to look at, instead of single genes, what a single gene is doing, what a set of genes is doing. So that's uh, one part of, it's sort of like really influenced my career and the, the many papers and the many types of approaches in computational biology, this approach of looking at gene set and looking at gene set enrichment, that um, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. It's just the, the more logical way to do things in this day with the types of technologies that we have and the type of data that we have. And now everyone that is doing it, the RNA seq or microarray studies they're going to do gene set enrichment analysis of some sort. And what I've been busy in myself for the last, so first, so this is the method that uh, was published in that paper where uh, you have a gene set and you have some signature of differential expression genes. You look at the entire differential expression uh, from your microarray samples and then you see how your gene set is enriched with your uh, signature. Uh, so the back end of this, and what what we have sort of like in the background, we have those gene sets. So those are annotated uh, lists of genes that share some function, and that can be a gene ontology term, or it can be a pathway, or like a cake pathway. But uh, what we realized uh, in the last several years that you can make a lot of different data sets be gene sets. So one of the, the tools that I'm going to demo today uh, is the idea is that you can have many, you can do gene set enrichment analysis against many resources that people never thought of before that can be used for this gene set enrichment analysis. Some of the exciting resources are, for example, the ENCODE project the epigenomics roadmap, or the data from the epigenomics roadmap project, the uh, Alan Brain Atlas data, the mouse, mouse phenotype data that is collected by the SCOM project. So we're going to see that there. And this is an example of a gene set library. It's just a text file here, it's open in Excel. You have some term, and then you have a bunch of genes that belong to that term. So we've been developing this tool called Enricher, which is a gene set enrichment analysis tool. And uh, it's uh, the, the advantage of that tool, it's very easy to use, it's open, you don't have to register, and you can query your gene sets against uh, what we believe is the largest collection of gene sets, which is uh, right now close to 100,000 gene sets, uh, organized into 70 gene set libraries and those are categorized in several categories. So if you go to Enricher, it's also this idea of a Google type search engine. You cut and paste your gene sets, and then you submit it to the tool, and then you get the visualization of the data right away. So you put in your gene sets, and then you get this interface. You can try it on your laptops. There is an example that you can click on, and here is, you have an interface for all of those categories. We're going to go for the demo later. It's going to have time for that. The, the thing that I was saying is that uh, 
the number and the quarter tell you how many, uh, how many gene sets people have already uploaded to use the tool. And that, right now it's at 270,000 gene sets that people are uploading. And every day this number goes up by about 1,000. So the tool is becoming very popular and potentially the gene set, even though we are not going to publish it, it's becoming a resource that we can also tap into to understand sort of like the structure of what types of gene sets people are submitting and can we sort of like get a map of all of the gene sets that people are, that are out there and then maybe understand the structure of those gene sets. So that's something that we are not necessarily, so your gene sets are definitely not going to become public if you use it, but just I think there is some potential here when we're going to have this collective intelligence about the gene sets that people are collecting individually and then looking at them from a global perspective. Once you enter the gene set, can you go back and retrieve it again? Uh, yes, so in order to do that, you have to register because this way it creates an account for you and then you can save them, you can share them with colleagues uh, using the link, but you can, you can get back. So this is just showing how the popularity of this tool is increasing. And then I'll skip that. These are the different types of biological knowledge that is in Enricher and it's being processed by our data coordination center. And it has all those categories of data. And the idea is that what we are, think, what we are saying is that all of those data sets can be abstracted to those gene sets, those networks that just connect genes, simplified, but normalized in a way that now you can query it. One other thing that you can do with those gene sets, for example, if we have a gene sets of disease signatures and a gene sets of kinase perturbation signatures, both extracted from the from GEO, you can cross those gene sets and see, identify relationships, an unexpected relationship between kinase perturbations and disease signatures where you have, like, you compare normal tissue to disease tissue. So now you can find mechanisms of disease by looking at the kinases that match a disease signature or potential kinase targets for the disease. So we talked about signatures and there are different types of signatures. So as the DCIC, we're trying to also uh, define this concept of signatures. And uh, you can have a signature, so when you talk about a signature, when you generate a signature, or a gene set, it can be the entire set of all genes. And then you can have a number of how much it's changing, whether it's go up and down. And in gene set enrichment analysis, we use the entire, all genes, and then we, we label them as going up and down, we rank them. So we can have a number next to them, we can have just a rank of the, all of the gene, but we can also have a set, we can have a subset of all genes, for example, all the kinases, or all the genes that are upregulated. So those uh, can be a set of all genes, and also you can have a set of the subsets. So for example, if in your array, on the measure transcription factors or transcription factor expression or activity, then the ones that change can be a subset of the subset. So this is just to uh, orient you about this concept of signatures and gene sets. I'm going to skip this, but what, what we're doing as the DCIC, we're trying to improve methods for extracting better signatures from the data. So we published this method called the characteristic direction that identified differential expression using a very different methods than all existing methods and it's a multivariate method that we believe is better than, much better than many of the existing methods that are univariate. What it means by univariate, you look at the expression of gene in one condition, the expression of gene in another condition, and you say is, there is a statistical difference between the two conditions. What this method is doing is it, looking at all of the genes together. 
how much they contribute to the overall change. So, for example, if you look at two genes, um, by traditional methods, either gene one or gene two will not be called significant. However, you can uh, clearly see that there is a difference in the, in the different condition. And if you orient your axis in a certain way, you can identify that those genes are differentially expressed. So that method, we benchmarked it. And one of the nice things that is happening now, we do have data from, for example, from ENCO profiling transcription factors uh, at using chip seek data. And then there's also data about knocking down the transcription factor and seeing what type of changes in gene expression happen after the knockdown. So by combining those two data sets, you can start benchmark the computational as well as experimental methods. And here, here is the benchmarking where we tested this characteristic direction against uh, a, a full change, which is this green line that showed that in this particular benchmark there was no signal. So full change is very bad, a very bad method to identify differentially expressed genes in general. And then the red one is t-test. This is SAM. This is Lima. So uh, t uh, SAM improves on the t-test. Lima improves on SAM. But this characteristic direction method is much better. So it tells you that that method is identifying the right differential expression genes. So to build the, so, so uh, Armin already told you about the new L1000 connectivity map, and Chamna sits here, he's developed a similar search engine tool to query only the chemical perturbations of the links and only the data from the phase one of the so he took, and in order to make it uh, run very quickly, he filtered out to uh, only include those perturbations out of those 400,000 perturbations, only include those perturbations that are significantly doing something to the cells. And then we remained with about 20,000 significant perturbations. And now you can also do this up and down uh, submission of the gene sets, as well as also you can submit a signature. So you can submit uh, a gene and a, a number next to it that defines the differential expression or define the contribution of this uh, vector analysis that, that I mentioned before. We're going to demo this uh, tool later. So this uh, uh, tool, you give it some gene set and it gives you a ranked list of drugs. It has a nice feature where it gives you the overlapping genes, so between the perturbation and the differential expression, and then you can do enrichment analysis on the overlapping genes, either the genes that are reversed in the up direction or reversed in the down direction. You can either reverse your expression or mimic your expression. And also, a new feature that Chana added in this week is that if when you look at the top 50 drugs that match your signature, your query, you can also get the fragments of the molecular structure of the drug, enrichment analysis on the fragment of the. So sometimes, in some cases, you get enrichment for uh, substructure of a drug that gave you the signature. So we will demo this later on, and then uh, you'll be able to. This is just an uh, illustration that this search engine was used to identify a small molecule that inhibited Ebola infection in uh, human cell lines in a dose-dependent manner. And this uh, molecule came up, up as the top ranked in, under comparing a different, three different time points. And the uh, members of the military uh, have a friend there in the four victory that can test uh, in the small molecules against e uh, live Ebola. And he tested it and he got positive results with this top one drug. So what we're saying is that this method really works. It, it's not going to work all the time in all type of conditions and settings, but it's a very rational approach to uh, 
go forward with therapeutics as well as understanding mechanisms. Yes, yeah, so that we've done a lot of the those that of benchmark where you need to input your top 50 genes or your top 200 genes or top 500 genes, and uh, there is some sweet spot somewhere around between 200 and 300 for most studies, but it's also um, if you get a different answer, if you put your 50 genes and your 100 genes and then 500 genes and you get a different answer, then you're, I would not rely on this signature as much. It, the, when it works, and when I feel confident, is that it doesn't matter. It's like you put two, uh, 100 genes, you put 1,000 genes, you always get a consistent answer, or it's almost the same answer. And then you can say, okay, the signature is strong, and okay, get the right, this is the, so that's the, my, my personal experience. Those things, it's good feedback for us also to know that those things need to be better defined. There are p-values, like that's not an issue. There is corrective p-values. We all know how, uh, how to compute them, but there's still some uh, uh, sort of a like dark matter, the uh, art part that I admit that exists and it's not hasn't been completely restored. Back. So this tool, GeoTurnRicher, is a Chrome extension that gets added to GEO, you install it at the Chrome store, it's free, you just click on one button and we can show you uh, later how to do it, and then once you have this Chrome extension, you can extract signatures, so it adds a button to GEO automatically, once you go to GEO, you identify your study, you still have to select your samples, but once you select your samples, you can submit it instead of using this GEO uh, query that is pretty useless. It is submitted to, to this uh, geo to enricher tool that downloads the GEO uh, data sets, compute the differential expression using several methods. The default method is this method that I mentioned, this characteristic reduction me method. And then you can you get, uh, uh, so this is hap what happens after you select the samples, and then you can select your uh, various methods of analysis and then you get some results. Uh, also want to mention uh, two courses that we uh, put up on Coursera. Uh, one is a course that we taught in the beginning of the year. It's called Network Analysis and Systems Biology. And it mentions many of those uh, tools and methods. It's still open and free for people to sign up. And then the other one is a course that we're going to start in September 15. And it's um, for the BD2K links. Uh, and that's uh, another open course that uh, we are going to offer. Uh, 